It's my feel good breakfast show. <laughs> Welcome back to your feel good breakfast show. This is Expresso. You're at S3, and while you were sleeping, we didn't sleep. We focused on all of the news headlines that you need to know to get you ready for your day. I'm just serious, Graham. We don't sleep. Never. We think about you. We stay awake at night. We track through all of the interwebs and we bring you all of the latest. That's what. That's our purpose. It's sounding a bit weird. We stay stay up all night just thinking about you, man. But we do. We really do, and we care. <laughs> and we're going to start down in the mother city, where yeah. the city of Cape Town will be implementing stricter traffic bylaws this month be warned so this includes who oh, impounding vehicles that have flouted traffic laws so the city amended the traffic bylaw of 2021 which allows officers to impound vehicles with missing number plates unroadworthy vehicles that's going to terrify a lot of people and then unlicensed vehicles as well now before the amendment uh, traffic officers could only issue a traffic fine for such violations but the mayoral committee member for safety, J.P. Smith, says that reckless drivers will be arrested and their cars impounded until court processes are completed. And he added that the harsh laws are intended to end the carnage on this city's roads. Fair game. It is indeed. If you think about Cape Town being such a destination for so many people, uh, a lot of cars come through. And more importantly, I think that sometimes the, the traffic officers, they are disabled with regard to For actually policing sure. it properly. And we want to look after everybody. And while some people are thinking, oh, why is it so harsh? If you look at the numbers during our December period, if you For look sure. at our numbers during the Easter weekend, we have to do something. No, completely. Completely. And unfortunately, there are so many unroadworthy cars, but I think we all know yeah. about the kind of people. Mm. All right, so let's move on because we also actually took a focus on AI um, uh. while you were sleeping. Don't worry, the machines <laughs> haven't taken open yet. Uh, they yet. haven't, no, okay. But Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and other tech firms agree uh, to AI safeguards Ooh. set by the White House. Because AI, is it a friend or is it a foe? Now, you and I have both seen movies, Graham. Yeah. We saw Terminator. We know what Cyberdyne systems are. We saw The Matrix. Like, these are the types of things that were pipe dreams for us. But now AI is closer to those movies than it's ever been and it's getting scary, right? It's terrifying, man. So, <laughs> so what rules are we putting in place? So now that President Joe Biden <laughs> uh, said on Friday that new commitments by Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and other companies that are leading the development of artificial intelligence technology to meet a set of AI safeguards brokered by the White House, it's an important step toward managing the enormous promise and risks posed by the technology. Yes, we are having this conversation. Social media has shown us the harm that powerful technology can do without uh, the right safeguards in place. We've seen this so many times where you can stick a president's face on somebody yeah. and it's so believable and so real that it could be a problem to national security. Uh, well, it's the tone. I remember when they did with, uh, with Donald Trump where they created those photos yes. and it could not have been more real terrifyingly so. And now the UN Council, they're going to hold their first meeting about potential threats of AI, and they are looking at really safeguarding it properly. Yes, we are talking about AI safeguards already. I know it's scary stuff, but it's there for a reason. Yeah, and I suppose what scared me the most is that you've got politics and government weighing in now with that list of safeguards. Um, so let's bring it back home for an African, a continental connection. And Africa mourns the death of the Yebo Gogo man Kole Omotoso. Oh, man. Look at that face, that smile. Oh, this is going to leave a void. The man widely recognized as the face of the long-running Yebogogo advertising campaign that was probably one of the biggest. Right. He passed away last week at the age of 80. You know, most South Africans will remember this guy for... Yebo Koko. Yebo From the adverts, the, the company used to promote its brand in the 1990s and early 2000s, but a true icon of South African culture. Yeah, completely. And I think he became one of the most visible people in the country, reflecting the changing face of a new South Africa. And I'm so glad yeah. that he was able to have that moment in time. He's just so connected. And just to remember Amatoso for a second, okay, born 21 April 1943 in Akure, Ondo State in Nigeria. He obtained South African citizenship back in 99. He was married to Magali. Rita Motoso, uh, an architect and an urban planner originally from Barbados, and he later became a professor at Stellenbosch University's drama department. Oh. Uh, that is the legacy that he leaves behind, and we will always remember our main go go, yeah. our Yebo go go. Yebo go go. Um, and crazy time to be alive, but right. so important to look back, look forward, yes, but also think about how you are existing right now. 
What truth are you living regardless of AI politics and everything that's happening around you? That's where it begins and ends. So if there's any stories that are affecting your lived experience, let us know. And this is affecting our lived experience. Oh, yeah. We couldn't be happier. Matthew Ball is home. Yeah. <laughs>